Welcome to Getting Started with Tableau Desktop. Today we're going to learn how to analyze data using Tableau and how to create interactive stories like this one. You can download the companion workbook or follow along in your own copy of Tableau. First, open a new copy of Tableau Desktop. This is the home screen. Here you can connect to new data, connect to saved data sources, or open recently used workbooks. The first thing we'll do is connect to data. You can see the wide variety of data sources Tableau connects to natively, such as Excel and text files, relational databases, online data sources, and many others. For this video, we'll connect to the sample Superstore data that comes with your copy of Tableau Desktop. The Superstore data is an Excel file that looks like this. The data is shaped like a database table. The first row contains the column headers, and there isn't any unnecessary text above these headers. This dataset contains transactions of customers purchasing specific products. Let's go back to Tableau Desktop and choose Connect to Microsoft Excel. Navigate to the file on your machine and double-click to open it. Now we're in the Data Connection window. From here, we can choose which sheets or tables we'd like to use. We can drag orders out into the canvas. If we wanted to add another table, such as returns, we could double-click or drag it out as well. Tableau Desktop automatically creates a default join, as you can see in the icon here. Clicking on the icon shows us what the join clause looks like, allows us to edit if we choose. For this presentation, we're going to connect a single table, orders, down here, we can see a preview of the data. This allows us to verify any joins we may have made, and we can rename columns here, or even change data types, such as changing customer ID to a string. Next, we can decide if we'd like to connect live to the data or extract it. Connecting live is great when you have constantly changing data or when you want to leverage a high-performance database. Alternatively, you may choose to import the data into Tableau's Fast Data Engine. This takes your data offline and allows you to take query load off critical systems. We'll connect live and click Go to Worksheet. We're now connected to that data set. Before we go over anything else, let's see how easy it is to start building something. We simply drag the fields out. Let's bring Product Category to Rows, Quantity Ordered New to Columns, Customer Segment to Rows, Region to Columns, and let's bring Region to Color as well. It's that easy to create a visualization. You'll notice that I brought in those fields from this data window here. It's broken up into dimensions and measures that represent the column headers in the Excel sheet. What are dimensions and measures? Dimensions are categorical fields, in this case, fields such as date, customer, and product category. These are fields that we want to slice and dice our numerical data by. Dimensions create labels in the chart and are color-coded blue. Measures, on the other hand, are our metrics. They are the numbers we want to analyze. Measures create axes in the chart and are color-coded green. In this case, let's say we're interested in our total sales number. Let's place sales in the view. We can see that Tableau queries the database and returns a single result, giving us the sum of sales. This company has done about 9 million in sales. If we want to see this over time, we can drag order date to the top of the view. Tableau Desktop aggregates our dates at the year level. We can choose to expand this with the plus symbol. Now we see both quarters and years in the view. To see how all our Q1s are doing over the years, we can easily pivot the data so quarter is in front of year. Now we can compare how our growth looks by quarter across the years. Moving year to color shows us all the years on top of each other. If instead of drilling down further, we want to change quarters to months, we can click on the pill to access the drop-down menu and change it. If looking at an average of sales is more useful than sum of sales, we simply change that by using the drop-down menu and changing to average. But let's undo that. What about something like year-over-year -year growth? 
In Tableau Desktop, calculations like this are easy. Once again, clicking on the drop-down brings up the menu, and now going to Quick Table Calculation, we can see common business calculations as single-click options. Let's select year-over-year -year growth. If we still want to see the original sales, we can simply place it back into the visualization. Or we can have the year-over-year -year growth values appear in a tooltip instead of a graph by placing it on tooltip. The tooltip allows us to hover over values in the graph to see additional information. For example, here in May, we see we're up 43% from the previous year. What if we want to compare how sales in our different product categories are doing? Let's drag product category to the row shelf. Now we can see which categories are doing well and when they were doing well. We could even leave comments. For example, there's an increase in sales and office supplies, and we know this happens when our annual sale and office supplies takes place. We can leave an annotation by right-clicking, selecting Annotate, and adding an area annotation. If we choose, we could now right-click, copy this image, and share it with other people in our organization. We'll right-click on the Sheet tab and rename this sheet Sales Seasonality. What if we want the raw numbers behind this timeline? Tableau Desktop makes this very easy to do. We can right-click on the viz and copy the data and then paste it into Excel. This includes even that quick table calculation we did. Or we can simply right-click the tab and duplicate as a crosstab. We can easily swap our axes and move product category to the row shelf. Let's make this fit a little better. This looks nice, but we're worried that profits weren't doing good during our annual sale and office supplies. Let's add profit to the crosstab and find out how we're doing. Adding profit to color gives us a clearer understanding of overall trends. These colors don't look great though, so let's edit them. We'll click on color and click edit colors. Here we can choose from a wide variety of colors in the drop-down menu. Or we can select use full color range and we'll use six stepped colors and press OK. Or if we want to make this even more visual, let's undo that tweak in colors, change the mark type to square, and turn on mark labels. Now we have a highlight table that does an even better job of showing what's going on. We can quickly see that although technology and office supplies are doing well overall, furniture is doing poorly. Is this happening across all our stores in our sales region? Let's find out. We'll again right-click to rename this sheet Crosstab and create a new sheet. We know that furniture's profits are bad, but we don't know where furniture is doing poorly and we don't necessarily know how we want to view this data. Tableau Desktop provides a simple tool called Show Me to help in cases where we know the data we want to look at but don't know how to create an effective view. Show Me contains a list of common chart types that can help you start your analysis. Let's drag Show Me down here. Note, it's possible to build an enormous variety of charts in Tableau. Show Me is the one-click options, not a comprehensive list of possibilities. Let's begin by selecting different dimensions and measures while holding down the control key. On a Mac, it's the command key. We're curious about our sales and how they're doing in different states. Notice how different chart types will highlight based on what measures and dimensions we've chosen. Symbol maps look like a good choice for these fields. Let's also add city. We can increase the size of these dots by clicking on the size shelf. Let's also adjust the transparency and add some borders. We'll hide this menu and let's color these cities by profit. Earlier, we found that furniture had poor profits. To investigate this further, let's drag product category to the filter shelf. We'll choose furniture. To give our end user the option to choose their own categories, we'll right-click the pill and select Show Quick Filter and drag it over here. 
We can also modify filters by selecting their drop-down menu to choose from a variety of options. Here we'll choose Single Value List. Now anyone can easily choose the categories they're interested in, such as furniture and technology. Alternatively, we can create quick filters for elements in the view or directly from the Dimensions or Measures pane by right-clicking the field's names and selecting Show Quick Filter. We can double-click to rename this sheet Regional Sales and Profits and then create a new sheet. We know we have problems with furniture, but what types of furniture are doing poorly? Let's use Show Me to find out. Click to open the menu. Again, as we hold down Control or Command on a Mac and select the variables we're interested in, such as Product Category, Product Subcategory, and Sales, we see Show Me making various suggestions. We can click through a few charts to see which one looks best. Let's choose a bar chart and collapse Show Me. There is a hierarchical nature between product category and product subcategory. In Tableau Desktop, we can create hierarchies by simply dragging and dropping fields on top of each other in the Dimensions window. Let's drag subcategory on top of product category and call it products. We can add product name to this hierarchy as well. Creating this hierarchy in Tableau Desktop only takes seconds and gives us full drill-down capability. Now we can expand and contract our hierarchy using the pluses and minuses on the pills or in the view and get down to details for a specific item. Let's swap our axes, tidy the view, and sort our bars. To sort the three product categories by overall sales, we select the pill and click Sort in the ribbon. Now we see that technology has the most total sales, then furniture and office supplies. Let's sort again, this time by subcategory, and we'll do a quick sort from the axis, like so. And note that the order of categories stayed the same, and we're only sorting the bars within each category. We can see the actual sales values by clicking on the ABC button in the ribbon to turn on or off mark labels. But again, how's profit? Let's place profit onto color. We quickly see that tables are doing poorly from a profitability standpoint, despite how good the sales looked. Is this happening across all our regions? Let's place region here on the left. We quickly see that this problem seems to be coming from several regions. Here, it's good to note that we can group similar items together. We see in office supplies that the last few items have very small sales. We can select using the shift key the whole group of them and then group them using the paperclip icon. To rename that column, right click and select Edit Alias. We'll call it something like Small Office Supplies. To simplify the view, let's swap the axes, switch back to normal, take region off, and hide field labels for rows by right-clicking. Let's call this sheet Sales by Category and create a new sheet. From our map, we saw that profitability was doing poorly in specific locations. We have a hunch that these locations have a high shipping cost for furniture, which is eating into our profits. Let's place profit on the rows shelf, shipping cost on the column shelf, Region onto Shape, Product Category onto Color, and Customer Name onto Detail. Notice that by placing Customer Name onto Detail, Tableau makes a mark for each customer name just as it made a mark per department and region when we dragged them into the view. Currently, these points represent the sum of shipping cost and profit for all transactions per customer. We could also fully disaggregate our data to plot each and every transaction at the row level by going to the Analysis menu and disaggregating the data. From here, we can see that we have a significant number of customers with low profits, so there's definitely something worth looking into. We can assign fields on the Marks card to different roles. For instance, we can click on the drop-down menu next to Customer Name and change it to Label. We can choose to add additional fields to the label, such as sales, by bringing it to the label shelf. 
We can edit this label by clicking and then again by text and modifying as we see fit. Let's right click on the view and show trend lines. We quickly see that as shipping cost goes up, profits go down in furniture. We can quickly identify customers who are contributing to this problem and look into them further. Hovering over the mark brings up the tooltip. From here, we can look at the underlying data and even copy it into Excel again. Let's move customer name from label to detail again. Remove sales and turn off the trend lines. We'll call this sheet Customer Breakdown. We've created some insightful views of this data set. Now we want to share this with our team and compile a dashboard. Multiple individual views can be combined into a single dashboard. We'll click on this tab to create a dashboard. And let's size this appropriately. And we'll drag our map into the view and place sales by category and our customer breakdown below it. We can also adjust different graphs to fit more cleanly. Right click on the Dashboards tab and rename it Sales Dashboard. We can add the title to this dashboard as well, and editing it is easy. Double clicking pulls up this rich text editor. On the quick filter, notice that when we click on various categories, our map will change to reflect what we've selected. What if we want all the visualizations to change? We can select the drop down menu and choose Apply to All. Now, when we filter by something such as office supplies, all of our sheets will update. But what if we want to drill into details on the map? For instance, there's a red spot on the map, and we would like to see which customers and products make up that red spot. On the map, we can use the caret in the upper right-hand corner and select Use as Filter. Now the bar chart and scatter plot update to show just that points information. What if we want to lead our audience through the path of our discovery of these profitability issues? Tableau Desktop offers a feature called Story Points that lets you assemble a series of specific views to walk the audience through an analysis. We can build a story by clicking New Story from the menu. We can resize this to fit better. Just like with the dashboard, we can bring in any visualizations we'd previously made. Let's pull out Regional Sales and Profits and name this point Overall, Our Profits Look Strong. The viz is still fully interactive. We can select from the filter. When we do, the word update appears above the navigator. Clicking update will save this state of the viz, or we can save as a new point. This is one of the key aspects of story points, the ability to snapshot a specific insight of a visualization. We can name this, but not across all segments, and add a description to the point by dragging it out, saying, Furniture appears to have poor profitability in some areas. Let's add another point. We want to explore that profit issue with furniture, so we'll bring out sales by category by double-clicking and name it, here's the biggest problem. We can call out that tables are dragging down furniture's profits. Because we built that great dashboard that lets us look into this issue more fully, we can bring out the dashboard itself into the story. Let's make it fit a bit better. We'll go back to the underlying sheet and resize it to fit our story and take off the title. Now, if we click on Furniture, we see that interactivity. Let's name this point, What's Behind It, Next Steps. Then click on Tables and update the point. Clicking through the navigator walks us through our entire analysis, culminating in that exploratory dashboard. We'll name the story Profitability the whole story. Now that we have gone from raw data to insight in this workbook, we want to think about how to share it with others. Workbooks can be shared in any number of ways, but the most effective way to share a workbook is to publish it with Tableau Server or Tableau Online. Published workbooks are up-to-date, 
secure, fully interactive, and viewable by web browser or on a mobile device. Thank you for watching Getting Started with Tableau Desktop. We invite you to continue with the on-demand training videos to learn more.